and gentlemen, I'm excited to welcome you to our PR planning scheduling supply surprises webinar. Um, I'm here with Ken McGaffin, and we're going to be sharing some thoughts and some ideas and some learnings we've had in the past few months on uh, PR development, even from a link building agency. Um, so the takeaways we hope that you get from the end of this webinar is um, a really good understanding of how to know newsworthy um, and you know getting a grasp for what newsworthy means for your client even if your client maybe doesn't yet have a grasp on what's newsworthy about their company because sometimes we don't always know what is the most interesting story about ourselves. Um, then another thing that we're going to be talking about is thinking about PR like a journalist. Um, when I first started uh, PR with Citation Labs, I had this preconceived notion that it was a lot more like this, you know, old-fashioned kind of corporate uh, marketing tactic. And I learned, as I'll be discussing in my section of the webinar, that some of the best approaches for PR is actually when you start thinking like a journalist and stop thinking like a corporate PR that I imagined I had to think like. Um, and finally, we're going to be talking about planning to be spontaneous, which is obviously a little bit uh, oxymoronic, but hopefully the point will get across over the course of the webinar and how PR is definitely a tactic that you can't really uh, always, you know, you can't set expectations um, for things to work out as planned, but at the same time, you can uh, do PR efforts in a way such that uh, when things happen well, um, they really work out for you. So, yeah, yeah, um, just, just as long as they work out, Megan. <laughs> they might not work out to plan, but just as long as they work out, that's good. No, yes, they work out eventually. Yes, exactly. And I will be passing now to Ken McGaffin for the first part of our webinar, who's going to focus on knowing newsworthy and what newsworthy um, really can mean for you and your clients. So pardon me while I pass the reins over to Ken. Um, and Ken, it's all yours right now. Okay, thank you, Megan. And I uh, hope you're seeing my screen there. And yes. the newsworthy thing on the screen. Okay. Now, the, the funny thing about newsworthy is that there is no formula for what is newsworthy. It's really what a journalist or an editor considers to be newsworthy on that particular day when they get that idea for a story or they get a pitch that they like. So there's no solid rules to it, but we can uh, put out something here. And I'm, there, there, there's 17 ideas. Luckily, I'm not gonna th go through all 17 because that would be a little bit boring, but it's <laughs> worthwhile you coming back and having a look at this. So let's just pick out one or two. You want an unusual order. So uh, if you want an unusual order, like an export to China or um, um, uh, um, an order in Minnesota when you're based in Boston, that's the sort of thing that can really um, grab you some uh, attention. You've created new jobs, you launched a contest, et cetera, et cetera. Journalists want to feature interesting stories so if you can provide the story that's interesting that makes the journalist think oh that's interesting and also makes the journalist think my readers would be interested in that or i could cover that in this way then you're starting to work well but of course as i said there's no direct laws to follow or ways to do it and so you get to understand this from two s First of all, by experience, because you build um, build that up. So the important thing is to start and start trying things. That's when you're going to learn uh, uh, as much as you can. The second is on watching what happens. Become real consumers of news. Read news. Now, I think as link builders, we're all used to scanning news yeah. and watching it very, very um, quickly. So, because we've got an awful lot of things to get through. That's not what I want you to do in this. What I want you to do is take your time. And I'm going to show you some examples. And what I would do with these examples is I would, I, I like getting articles from quality press and then reading them very carefully and seeing what ideas are in there and what inspiration I can get from it. 
and it's fantastic what you can learn. Now, myself and Megan were talking yesterday and said, well, let's show some great examples of editorial links because that's what a lot of people are interested in, SEOs and link builders. How do we get to that editorial link? Now, again, there's no laws to follow that. There's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes. Sometimes you get a link and sometimes you don't. You can increase your likelihood of getting links and when you don't get a link, well, you can uh, repair the damage and recover um, fr from, from that. But it's never definite that you're going to get an editorial link, even if you're promised them. However, those wonderful things do exist. And so after talking to Megan yesterday, I just um, decided to grab seven little examples. Each of one contains an editorial link to a small business, and in some cases to a larger business. So we're going to look at those very quickly and see what's the story behind them. So the very first one here is a food cart, for heaven's sake, a small food cart in Portland City. And uh, they've just relaunched with a new menu. And this is an interesting story. Now, whether this was a press release or not, I suspect it wasn't. I suspect it was probably through a conversation with a journalist that this happened. But here's a great story. The thing that this shows is that even the smallest companies can get featured in major media. So that's really worthwhile. I've also given a link, as I'll do with all of this stuff, so that you can go and see the original article and see what you can take from it. Now, here's the second one. I'm going to run through these very quickly. Do you remember Smarties? Well, I certainly do as a, as, as a kid, but I didn't realize there was a, a domain called Smarties.com. And this is a story on CNN Money. And again, um, from the day before yesterday, about the um, D family buying that domain from a porn company and then building it up to be active again. And that's a, 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 a great human interest story. It's a story about these three women in the same family who did this story. So that's great. The fact that uh, it was purchased from a foreign, uh, the domain was purchased <laughs> from a porn website probably adds a little bit of spice to it. Read these stories and you understand the approaches that the journalists are taking. Here's another one here. Now, I'm sure most people have uh, have experience of using Harrow, helpareporter.com. And I suspect that this story from the Washington Post is picked up from, probably from uh, the replies to a Harrow query. The news is based around the American Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation talking about injury from running. And this story is about one prevention is to have a good running shoe. And of course, what they've done is they've then talked to lots of different suppliers. Each of those suppliers has got a nice little editorial link. So Harrow is probably the likely source of that. And that's a great way to get links. Next one, and I think this probably is another Harrow um, query. It comes from the New York Times and the New York Times. You will find queries from the New York Times on Harrow. And this one is simply about offbeat weddings. And again, reading through the story, there's a lot of links, a lot of different items, stands out almost as a Harrow story to me. So there's no press release involved. What was involved is responding to a journalist query with something that's interesting. And that's a great place to start and learn your skills. Now, the next one I want to take from the BBC. And again, I'm going to say this to the people um, um, who are outside the UK, and most of our, our listeners will be in the US, that UK media does have a very global perspective. So sites like the BBC, like the Guardian newspaper, like the Telegraph newspaper, see themselves as global entities. So they're legitimate targets for press releases, no matter where you are. But anyway, this is a local story 
which again, I think is probably coming from a conversation with a, a journalist, probably one of these companies, and they, there's a bit of a battle going off on over a brand name and a brand term. And the journalists find that interesting enough to write that particular story. So even small stories, small companies, and even little disputes can make the columns and can get juicy links um, for the companies behind them. So think about these sorts of things. Look for these opportunities. The next one here, and I love this. I really, I had a look at this website. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's miniature storefronts of old stores in New York, and it is absolutely beautifully done. And as you can see, this story is featured in the Guardian newspaper based in the UK, but sees itself as serving an international market. So again, follow the links and you will see these stories in the situation and see what you can learn from them. Again, remember, each one of these stories had an editorial link to the companies that were mentioned. Okay, and here's another one, another uh, one from the Boston Globe, who from, from what I see, um, didn't used to link out quite a lot, but now I see lots and lots of examples on the newspaper of linking out to companies and organizations. And I've picked up, what's the story here? It's a nose for innovation. And it's about uh, breakout labs featuring and giving funding to a variety of small tech businesses. Again, that makes a great story. Okay, so those sorts of stories are all about us. I got that in probably about half an hour's work, just going through and looking at those media outlets and looking for editorial links. Now, it is, as I said, impossible to guarantee you get a link coverage but you can raise your potential, particularly if you do your PR by thinking like a journalist. In other words, being able to see the story before the journalist even sees the story. And so Megan's going to take us through, I think, a wonderful case study, which is the first significant piece of work uh, Megan did at Citation Labs from a PR point of view. And within two months, we got front page coverage on a national magazine. It's a great story. So I'll let you take that away, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, oh, can I can hear uh, uh, my voice my is voice echoing, echoing a little bit. A little bit. Can you can put your headphones in or mute? OK, you got it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I do want to mention that we'll be putting the links to all of the articles Ken mentioned in his section um, in the blog post that goes along with this webinar. So if you want to look at those news articles a little more closely and read them more closely, um, the links will be on the Citation Labs blog this afternoon. Um, so thank you, Ken, for the introduction. Um, and yeah, this is... Uh, I'm first going to kind of start off um, just kind of going big a little bit on um, this particular webinar is part of our uh, Citation Labs larger content creation uh, series. And so if, you're, if you've been watching that series and you've been listening to what Garrett's been saying about different types of content creation and audiences and topic finding, the way that PR, I want to address the way that PR really fits into um, you know, a larger link building strategy. So. Um, and this is something that we've talked about in Citation Labs previously, but just to go over a little bit again, um, I think, you know, PR is another great place to experiment with new content formats and, and different styles of creating a whole new range of people to reach out to. Um, I'm going to plug the link prospector a little bit here. This is our tool. Obviously, you don't have to use the tool in order to find great reporters, but it is a good way. I did a little example report here for someone, maybe Bob the Plumber, who's looking to find accessible reporters to in Portland, Oregon, to pitch his you know plumbing news to or his story to. Um, and whether you use the link prospect or not, obviously these are new people you can find in your industry locally um, or nationally that you, know, you can outreach to. Um, and then just a third way is kind of 
um, the cascade effect is what we like to call it. And it's basically a great way that PR can kind of help spread just in and of itself. If you land a good story, there's a good chance that more good stories can result from that just because news yes, spread. Yeah, and just spread. Support, sure. support you on, on that. Um, and uh, a few years back, I got a piece in the New York Times. And first of all, it was terrific because for two days I had fantastic traffic coming to my site. But then I, I, I did a link analysis about a week later or so. And then lots and lots of other sites liked the, what they'd read on the New York Times and the other wrote about it or linked to it. So I got that whole second raft of links without even asking for them. So I think that's one of the big bonuses of getting decent media coverage. People follow it and uh, you get your bonus there. Yeah, and that, I mean, that you know, definitely could happen with traditional link building. It's, it's not normally quite as common with traditional link building just because of the format and the style. So yeah, PR is a great place to, you know, like we said, it's, it's, you can't all, we're planning for surprises here. You know, you can't always predict when things are gonna happen, but one great thing about a surprise is that it can have surprising benefits too. So, so even though Ken McGaffin uh, has been in the PR industry for uh, a little bit, I guess, like a couple of decades, I would say, um, the Citation Labs uh, has recently opened an arm of uh, PR offerings um, with Ken McGaffin heading it up. So this was our first foray into having a PR client and Duval Roofing was our first client. Um, Ken Duval is a uh, entrepreneur in the Boston area. He owns and operates a roofing business. Um, they of about uh, 12 to 14 roofers. Um, they do a roof in a day, so they're covering usually just one home at a time. Um, he doesn't own a large roofing conglomerate, but he is doing pretty well in his area, and he has decent, he has a good website and um, decent rankings, but he wanted to improve his organic rankings, improve mentions, and improve um, using press and positive press mentions about his company. Uh, through our PR services. So um, the reason that this particular case study became such a lesson for Citation Labs is because of how, of how different uh, the, our initial anticipation of uh, what would work and what would benefit Duval Roofing was actually a little bit off. Um, and, and we were having some trouble securing press for him, as you'll see in this case study, um, until a pivotal turnaround that really not only changed the campaign, but but changed the way that um, I think about PR and, and that I hope you'll think about PR as well. So I'll now move into uh, the specifics of you know how we operated this campaign. Um, to begin with, we thought that a great way to start um, doing outreach and securing press for Duval Roofing would be a timely angle with local journalists. So as many of you probably know, um, last winter the Boston area received a large plethora of snow and ice and this um, bad weather did a lot of damage to local roofs. Um, and so, you know, this is something that, according to Duval and our conversations with him, um, we learned really was still affecting homeowners well into the spring and summer, just with the number of repairs that um, had to take place. So we, um, we really thought this could be a great opportunity to reach out to local journalists and see if any were interested in covering the lasting effects of the winter snowstorms. Uh, and we did some outreach to people who had covered uh, the roof damage during the winter um, with a pitch on you know, some of the uh, learnings and stats from a Duval Roofing and his crew on, on the, ha the homes that they were working on. Um, and it turns out that we didn't get many bites actually. Apparently by the summer, uh, you know, people wanted to forget about the snow and, and local journalists just weren't all that interested in what we had to say about um, winter roofing damage. Uh, you know, maybe come winter, we will try that pitch again and see if people care again about the way that snow affects winter, uh, snow affects roofs. But 
um, in in the summer it really wasn't uh, a good angle for us. Um, another approach we tried was the early adapter, early adopter approach, in which um, you know Duval, the company, they use some some pretty advanced technology to do their quotes um, to um, you know to to figure out um, how to divide up the uh, roofing job um, by the day. Uh, Duval doesn't just rely on eyeballing it. He uses the aerial photography. So knowing that, we sent out pitches to tech and entrepreneur um, local magazines to see if anyone would want to cover uh, a local small business owner who is using more advanced technology in his practices. Um, and we did get some response, but people, it seems, were uh, journalists were curious and they were looking for someone who's more than an early adopter. They were looking for someone who is a creator of technology, someone who is, you know, uh, doing something really unique in their business. Um, so we just didn't quite have the hook on that story yet. Um, you know, so another during this time, um, another approach that we were taking towards getting press for Duval was um, Harrow pitches. And I know Ken McGaffin spoke a bit uh, in the previous section about Harrow and the wonders that um, Harrow pitches can do. And this is something we found to be completely true um, for Duval as well. So, you know, Harrow is a great, a great way to, um, you know, find reporters who are looking for uh, people that are going to give quotes. And this isn't, I wouldn't say this is a strategy that can be used exclusively um, because you're, you're in a, in a, you're essentially, instead of creating the story about your own business, you're um, allowing journalists who already have a preconceived story to put your business's quotes and links to your business or to your website into their story, which is, again, it's great for securing links. Um, we, you know, over the course of a couple months, you know, scoured uh, Harrow uh, queries. You get the emails three times a day, and we scoured their emails, and we found five that really matched the messaging that we wanted to send out about Duval Roofing. Um, and out of the five, we actually secured two stories, which both included links, and that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good uh, result uh, 40%. Um, so Harrow is a great way to um, kind of get uh, some return on some quick return on your investment. Um, it's a great way to earn links, quality links, the how customers, how complaints might improve your business. That story um, that you see on the screen actually was in the American Express Open Forum, which has a pretty high domain authority. So that was a great from a link building perspective, that was a great win for us. But again, um, and Harrow is also great for practice. Just it, it helped us form um, some of the messaging we wanted to say around Duval Roofing. But again, it's not something we could use exclusively. So we were still digging for the perfect angle to pitch and to send out to reporters, uh, which is what led us to, actually it was a Harrow interview that led us to this magical, wonderful three-hour off-the-cuff conversation that really changed the story we were telling about Duval Roofing. Um, this conversation came about because, um, you know, this was something we'd had many previous conversations. This wasn't our first conversation with Duval. So over the course of a couple of months, we'd been building up a rapport and we'd been building up trust uh, with our client and. Uh, by the time we are, were a couple of months in, the conversations and the questions that I was asking in terms of how he runs his business and what his history was, um, Ken Duval personally, we were able to, I was able to ask more personal questions and I was able to really get to the heart of his story, which turned out to be fascinating. Um, and once we developed that into our pitches, that's really what won us, um, well, I'll show you what it won us. It won us the cover of a uh, roofing contractor, a national magazine, which is, uh, you know, the top of his industry, and he got to be on the cover and have the feature story. Um, so what really changed was learning 
about not only approaching from some of the different angles that we originated with, uh, some of the initial stories and bites that came from our preliminary conversations, but it was this really big, really long conversation, um, you know, the, our journalistic curiosity and almost journalistic questions that led to a much bigger and more in-depth pitch email that really, looking at this pitch email and, and seeing the resulting story, it, it the pitch email ended up being a story in and of itself. And that's something that just came out of, again, that long conversation, which was built upon many other conversations we had with our clients. So um, we learned, you know, in this conversation a lot more about Ken Duval's personal history, how he had a rough beginnings. He didn't have a lot of money or family support. Um, a really interesting part of his story as well is that he uh, became a very, very good kayaker and made the U.S. kayaking team. He could have potentially gone to the Olympics with the U.S. kayaking team, but when faced with the decision between training for the Olympics and uh, starting his own roofing company, he chose roofing, which really shows you what how much he cares about his practice and, and his uh his business um and and then you know the pitch goes into and not it's not just a pitch really it's a story it goes into uh duval's uh, how his company grew uh he used a piece of land that um he purchased it to for for his, for duval roofing to have their own um they're able to hold materials in bulk. They have their own recycling uh, station. So it's a transfer station for recycled materials so that they actually save money on not having to dump all of their materials. And conveniently also makes them very eco-friendly compared to other roof, roofing contractors in the area. Um, and on top of that, we built his pension for continuous innovation. Um, and his human side, which really, in, in, towards the end of our conversation, he started talking about his employees and how they're, you know, he, he feels very much like an older brother or a, a family member with his employees and, and really cares about the men who work for him. Um, altogether, instead of being it being this small angle here and that small angle there, this, this story became a, a full a full vision of, of who this person was and what his company was. And it turned into a pitch that um, this particular one, one entrepreneur summit story was kind of just his whole story. And really this conversation turned into a few different pitches that I was able to fill with interesting quotes and interesting information, um, personal and um, just more of an arc of a story in every pitch thanks to our in-depth conversation uh and again that is through um through a series of events that really almost can't be duplicated we we sent out we sent out this initial pitch for a quote from uh the woman that was the PR representative for a technology company that Duval uses she was so impressed with his story that she sent it on to a contact at Roofing Contractor Magazine, and that's how we ended up with the cover story. It was, it's one of those crazy events that really can only, you can't, there's no way we could have anticipated. It just kind of, it just kind of happened the way it happened, and um, it happened because we put in enough work and enough conversations over the course of three months to lead to that inspiring three-hour conversation and, and a, a really different kind of story than the one we were initially pitching. Um, and so I would say you know, some of the lessons that um, we learned from, from this experience helped me to kind of to distill advice for link builders who are starting out in, in PR or not just link builders, SEOs, or really anyone who sees themselves as part of a marketing team but hasn't so much accustomed isn't so much accustomed to a PR mindset because I, at the beginning, um, wrongfully believed in some stereotypes that I had about PR, that it was much more corporate and, 
and much um, less personal than I found it to be. And and so learning about this transition to a PR mindset from a more link building mindset really helped uh, and will help in the future with future campaigns. And I think can be a great way for any link builder SEO to start thinking about how they want to start a PR campaign either for their own company or for their clients. Um, first of all, Citation Labs and, and a lot of a lot of SEO and link building companies, the way we think about our um, content creation strategy is very processized. We we very much believe in high utility content and we you know we prospect for opportunities in the market where there are, are information gaps and we fill the gaps with quality content. Then we reach out to people who we think might be in need of that content and say, hey, there's you know, there's this information we've provided. No one's really provided this information in this way. Would you be interested in uh, linking to it or, um, you know, referring it to your site visitors in, in whatever way? And that's much more of a process type thinking, which I think a lot of link builders are accustomed to. But the PR mindset actually calls for what I like to think of as a story thinking, which is much, much less... Uh, circular in a way and is much more f focused on not so much where what else is out there what are the gaps out there but much more looking internally at the company or at the client um, looking for that story and and you know including along with this I, I thought about the arc of a traditional story how um, really what what gets people interested in a story is that there are obstacles to overcome that there is tension and and that there's someone that's working their way through trouble and and then they come out the other side um and and so you know thinking back to Duval um some of his obstacles was you know little money or family support uh he was laid off during a recession and given an opportunity to go to the Olympics uh which you know led to a big decision and, and I think whether you're writing a story about the CEO of your company or whether you're writing the story about a customer who had an interesting experience with your product, I think thinking about the, really the arc of a story um, and, and the way to tell it as a PR person as opposed to uh, thinking about it in, in a informational, processized way can really help develop Part of a PR mindset. Um, another piece of advice I would give to people starting out in PR is um, how much of a roller coaster this experience can be. Um, I think anyone who calls themselves a marketer uh, in any sort of marketing category knows the ups and downs that come with marketing. It's There's no guarantees and a lot of times there is trial and error, but I would say PR is especially so this way. Um, there's, again, like we started out really not knowing, um, not not having a solid idea of what would work for Duval Roofing. And we sent out, you know, many pitches that really went nowhere. And I wouldn't say, oh, we were, we were doing it wrong. We were doing it right, actually. That's, that's kind of the way PR works is you, try one angle and you try another angle and you, you really, there's a lot of trial and error to see what kind of stories are going to grab people's attention. So it really is, is something that you have to set expectations for not really knowing until you get the big hit when the big hit is going to come. Uh, and finally, a way to think about adapting to the PR mindset is Again, with content that we create for link building or for content marketing even, there's, uh, you know, Citation Labs, pride, we pride ourselves, and I think rightfully so, in having um, high utility content, meaning it's something that people get a lot out of. They can take home and unwrap and, you know, put in a checklist and, and really feel like they learned something, uh, which is what I think a lot of content marketing should be. But when you're thinking in the PR mindset, there's a bit of a shift that goes on there as well because it's not always the high informational content that's going to get attention. I mean, you know, like I said, initially with Duval, we pitched 
stories that, um, you know, trying to inform the public of, of what kind of roof damage was still existing in the Boston area. And even though I can see that being a story, that's not the story that caught attention for this company. The story that caught attention was this entrepreneur and the trials of his early life and, and the company he built and at the cost of an Olympic dream, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and, you know, it's sometimes it's um, the story, like Ken McGaffin was uh, in his examples earlier in this webinar with the, the man who's building miniature house or mini, miniature representatives of storefronts. That's, I mean, that's a great story and you do want to go look at it and you want to explore the website, but it's, is it high utility? Is it a great how to? Not necessarily. It's, it, it pulls at something more heart related. And I think when transitioning to the PR mindset, it's important to keep in mind that stories that will be successful may have a lot more to do with the heart than the brain. Um, and finally, I just want to uh, go over some of the, I want to compare some of my initial and maybe some stereotypes that people have, I think, that exist um, about uh, maybe a more old-fashioned sense of PR or an old-fashioned stereotype of PR and what we found as really, I, I almost want to think of what we're doing as brand journalism because I think as we found, that's really what worked for Duval, and I think that's what's going to work for a lot of brands as they start or continue or build up their their press outreach is um, just a different form of telling their own story. Um, and, and this, again, we have on, on the left side um, what I think of as a brand journalist on the right side what I think of as a PR rep, I'm not saying that this is what all PR reps are like. I'm just saying this was my uh, stereotype that turned out to be incorrect. And um, But I, I, I feel like it's based on maybe an older model that just uh, is still, if, if, if not existent, is still affecting the way people think about PR. So, um, you know, I think really the way that a brand journalist makes a good and interesting story is by asking the right questions. Um, and that's that's what we ended up doing with Duval, and that's what we're doing, you know, when we're telling the story of Citation Labs, when we're telling the story of any future client is really like digging in and asking, you know, it doesn't always have to be the personal questions. It can just be um, really getting to know the customers, getting to know the key stakeholders, whoever you're interviewing, really digging into the company and how it works, as opposed to, the traditional thinking of burying the dirty secrets that no one wants coming out, um, which is is kind of a stereotypical thought of what PR might do. Um, at least in my met, maybe, maybe I just watched too many movies about about crazy PR people, but uh, that that was somehow in my mind as as what happens. Um, also, you know, the interesting thing about a brand journalist is that. I mean, you're someone within, you're working for the company, but you're also looking for the story within the company. And the story can be wherever. It can be about an interesting employee, that, or it can be about, a, like I said, an interesting customer that's using a, your product in a, in a unique way. It can be, you know, a brand, the fun thing about the, the idea of being a brand journalist is that you're poking around and you're finding human interest or, or possibly informational pieces that from within your company to um, show the world that you're interesting. Um, whereas I think some of my traditional thinking about PR reps was that you kind of you had a, a press release with you know half filled in with blanks and it's kind of like a Mad Lib and you're inserting quotes and inserting data here and there, but that it's not. Um, it's not as investigative as I've found brand journalism to be. Uh, and finally, I'd say that a brand journalist, one that will find their job both interesting and, I think, more successful, is someone that's showing off the brand's human side. I, um, as someone who has a history in social media, uh, I, I've seen how the market has changed in the past 10 or 15 years 
uh, I think people are expecting their brands to be more honest, to be more human, to be more relatable, to not be hiding behind suits and, and uh, fancy clothes, but to be, you know, right there uh, with their with their customers and, and showing off their human side. And I think PR can play a big role in that by, again, like looking for the human stories, the interesting stories, asking the questions uh, and, and being a part of that conversation. Um, finally, I just want to give three takeaways for anyone that's coming from an SEO or really any, any beginning background um, thinking about starting a PR uh, offering or, or starting to do PR for their own company. And I would say start off by interviewing people just like a journalist would. Don't you know, don't hold back. Think, think of yourself as a, a, almost like a, a third party and, and, and see what questions come up and see, see what you can learn and how much you can learn about employees, company stakeholders, and customers um, that have interesting stories. Because really everyone has an interesting story. It's just about getting to the bottom of it. Um, practice with Harrow. I, I, again, highly recommend Harrow as a as a way not only to earn some some great links and some great press around uh, your company, but um, to practice sending out uh, press pitches and emails on behalf of your company, um, and also learning when to. And this is more of a gut thing, I suppose. Uh, learning when to use emotional appeal versus tactical planning, and and that's really just. I think that it was especially for people who already are, are in more of a link building um, or, you know, uh, utility content mindset to, to think about emotional storytelling or emotional content as having a place as well. Uh, so I will now hand the reins back to Ken um, for his section on, on planning to be spontaneous and, and how to kind of take some of these ideas and, and turn them into uh, an actionable plan. Um. Uh, uh, that, that, that's that, that's lovely. That, that's a great story in, in your you, yourself, Megan, because, you know, you it, 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 we can see the way that you worked through that and then got to a point where all the, pa all the pieces just tended to fall into place and mm -hmm. I think that's that's what happens in the industry I can remember my own first big story and uh, how exciting it is um, when that happens and then you realize you know gosh we're, we're all capable of doing this there's no big mystery to it right. but it's that, it's that ability to tell stories and it's that persistence and that helpfulness to the reporter that that, that that really works. Now, what I want to finish off on is I'm a great believer in planning ahead. So this doesn't come from oh, what we do today type of thing. We really want to try and uh, plan in advance. And I want to go through just a couple of things that will um, help us there. Let's see, let me go and catch up with Megan. <laughs> Right, okay, and here's a quote from Alice in Wonderland, which I just love. What's the use of a story, said Alice, without pictures and conversations? That's the opening line of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And it's a brilliant, brilliant piece of advice for anybody in PR. Because there's no use to the story if you haven't got something visual to it. Even if that's a, 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 a visual painted with words, it needs to be a picture in the reader's eye and in the journalist's eye and conversations. So people are not interested so much in what happened. They're interested in what Ken Duval said about his experience, what mm -hmm. it was like, the disappointment of not um, uh, going for the Olympics with the American uh, uh, kayaking team people want to hear those quotes so as you think all of you think about putting your st stories together 
think what's the visual element here because it's required and what are the conversations that you want your client to be entering into and put them there put people quotes in terms of doing this so i think this this particular single slide has got a fantastic lesson to teach us all about pr and about storytelling okay now having done that and re realized that one of the things that i then move on to and we'll probably talk about this in the coming months again and what i try and do and put together with a client and it doesn't come immediately is the key messages matrix and what i'm trying to do is then develop between six to ten key messages about the client and i i i get this from observing from interviewing from talking to the client and then this is what i try to build up and i will use this um in 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 um these three columns the first is the key message now here's pretty pretty bland air filters improve the quality of air inside vehicles so it's not very exciting blah 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 but it's one of the key messages that they want to get across and then what we create in the second column is something that's quotable tweetable let's call it a sound bite that sums up something interesting that supports that key message and um this is taken from a real piece of uh, uh, observation uh, a real story about an air filter company and this was the line that was used in the very final paragraph it was buried the air inside your car is six times more polluted than the air outside when i was listening to that, i said wow i didn't know that and that's an aha moment for a journalist so that sort of quote if the journalist wasn't aware of that beforehand that can be a killer that could really help uh, get you the coverage and then the third element to it are resources on your website that back that up so in this case a great piece of content that explains what's happening to the air inside your car why it's six times more polluted and what you can then do about it this is how our air filters work so this very simple matrix the key message air filters improve the quality of air inside vehicles the quotable tweetable soundbite the air inside your car is six times more polluted than the air outside and then a relevant resource on the website that an inter journal interested journalist can go and read more about take copy from and even quotes from this is really important and so with every pr client we try and go through this process of building this up over a number of months but once we've got those key messages in place then content creation story creation becomes very easy because what we do is we always relate it back to one of the key messages and then we know that the pr that we do is going to benefit the company so that is incredibly important now i'm going to tell you an example of how this um forward planning can really help and this is a, a, a about a real client i had a few years back um and it was coming up to national health and safety at work week uh in the uk and my client uh produced uh ergonomic chairs for computers and offices etc etc and there was a new change in legislation that was coming up and we wanted to do a little story around that now what i did was we did a bit of research and it was it was um uh, we could say it was flimsy research but i would probably wouldn't use that word. it was telephone interviews carried out with about 25 small businesses in a single day and from that we created a news story and a press release and a report and we had it ready to go for national health and safety at work week and i was very pleased with myself because i had it prepared a week in advance um which which was great and then something very strange happened the bbc broke the story a week early so they talked about the national health and safety at work week 
one week before they should have done so and one week before everybody was expecting them to do so luckily enough i had my research done because i had been planning ahead and i'd been prepared and what i was able to do was as soon as this broke at six o'clock in the morning on the uh, television screens i phoned up the bbc office and said saw that piece that's brilliant but hey would you like the small business view because we've just got this research here about the changes in legislation and how companies don't know anything about it and they said yeah right okay and i said i can get my client in within half an hour to do an interview and we were straight on the radio it was excellent we were on the radio before nine o'clock and then the fun really started because then the television stations got involved uh, other newspapers got involved and we got an absolutely huge amount of coverage that coverage would not have happened if i had not done the preparation in advance so i think it's really important even if your work is not finished but if you're thinking ahead then there are opportunities that you can pick up on and my client was absolutely and utterly delighted with the coverage that we got and it all came from that planning ahead so here's and uh, there's an article um megan can give you the link to it mm -hmm. on the site that explains this in, in more detail it's very simple there's also a link to a google document and here's what i do for 12 months ahead as I'm planning ideas and thinking about it, and that's over a number of weeks. First of all, industry events. What are the trade shows that are happening? Um, what's happening externally? And I fit them in, maybe two or three there in that one year period. Then what about your current events? The company events, sorry. What about your company events? So, so an anniversary, um, an expansion, a special order, uh, opening of new premises, release of a new product, what sort of company events are happening? And probably you'll put down two or three of those as well. And then relevant holidays or relevant anniversaries. So if you're doing something for Easter, great. Um, but also, um, like for instance, off the top of my head, if you're doing promotion for a chocolate company, well, knowing that sometime in March is national um chocolate week can you build a story around that um national coffee week i believe in sometime in september and if you do a, a search in google for those sorts of things you'll find out how companies piggyback on that so again you can put those relevant ho holidays down and then the fourth column which is my favorite is you will have some blank months and I always like to have at least one story per month to pitch to journalists. So if there are blank months, then I come up with my own initiatives, my own creative ideas. And that's what really can be of use. Now, sometimes I will work this through with the client and I like to do that. I like to talk them through that. But again, we couldn't have done that with Duval right at the start because they'd just been overwhelmed with it. We had to win their trust, first of all. And once you won, run a trust, won the trust of the client, then you can take time to go through this sort of thing with them. However, in our own office, of course, we can put together a plan like this because it helps us plan ahead. It helps us see the year ahead. Now, that is tremendously useful. Even though there's many of the things that we won't actually end up doing and there'll be new things coming in. But by following this plan, it means that you're never short of ideas. And I know um, uh, SEO and link builders are very fond <laughs> of plans. So this is something that's a real pleasure to fill in and something that's tremendously useful. Now, Megan, you will give people uh, uh, the, the link to that article. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go into a little bit more detail and explain what each of those things are. But yep. this can be PR gold.
Yeah, and the um, this will all be on this webinar, and, and uh, the links will all be on our blog this afternoon. So if you're looking for this, and actually the article that Ken is referring to is already on the Citation Labs blog. So if you just go to citationlabs.com/blog. You'll see that article up there. Um, uh, that's that's great. And um, from um, planning point of view, and the sorts of stuff that I've talked about, if you anybody wants to ask a question, just drop me a line. Ken at citationlabs.com and I will guarantee that I will answer each and every one of your queries. Okay, Megan, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, um, thank you and um, you know, thank to our uh, viewers for uh, spending their lunch hour or breakfast hour, depending on where they are, with us and um, you know, stay tuned for our next webinar in about a month, which should be about uh, outreach campaigns. So thank you again and um, uh, see you guys soon.